If you don't know, Taylor's introduced a new model in the American Dreamline, the AD22E, and today we had to compare it to the most logical comparison, the Martin 0015M. So stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name's Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you want to support the videos, visit our spring store link below for our custom designed t-shirts. So today, we are looking at two small body mahogany topped guitars from two of the premier builders in the world of acoustic flat top guitars. We have the new Taylor 8022E. What do you got? I got the Triple 15M, and you know, we've never really done a Taylor versus Martin comparison, so it's never. really nice to finally get one of these in there. <laughs> yeah, we never do this. You know, it's funny, it's kind of like uh, in this corner, you have the you know heavyweight champion of the world in small body kind of mahogany, yeah. top US made affordable guitars. Yeah. That's the category. <laughs> it's a good category it's to a good be in. Category. Yeah. And here's the upstart, you know? It's it's the uh, it's the mighty little Joe from Punch Out when I was a kid playing Nintendo. So that's an old school reference. It's an old school yeah. reference. <clears throat> so anyway, new school guitar though. Yeah, new school guitar. A lot that's similar between these, but a lot that's different. Yeah. And I think you know those are really easy to highlight. They're different companies. Mm -hmm. They've got different scale lengths. They've got different uh, nut widths. They've got dramatically different bracing because that's X brace and this is V class. Mm -hmm. uh, the woods are a little bit different. Um, one comes with the arrow case, one comes with a hard shell case, which I like. Um, this one has a pickup, that one doesn't have a pickup. Yeah. But. So thank you guys for watching. Yeah, that's the comparison there you go. right there. That's it. But, uh, but, you know, they are going to be a great comparison because they're very similar. And that's partly to do with the tops. Yeah, it's all a mahogany top, all that warmth, that mid range. But like you said in the introduction of the AD22, which. Uh, e, 8022 E, because it is only available with the pickup as of now. Um, check out that video if you haven't. It'll be linked above. Um, the compression and kind of interesting action and reaction that you get from the mahogany top, it's, you can notice it on both of these, yeah. but it's weird. It's, they're still different in tone. It's, it's really wild. They're dramatically different in tone, and uh, you're going to demonstrate these for us, but mm -hmm. you know, I think what we're going to hear a lot of is there's a few differences when it comes to scale length, and, it, and, uh, and of course, the, the backwoods are different. We should talk about that. Yeah. That's all mahogany. Yeah. Now, I am going to go on the record of a few things with this guitar that trips me out. One, it's a triple O, but it's not. The scale length is, it's actually an OM, but Martin's always called it a triple O, so whatever. Um, on the Martin website, it calls this mahogany. But if you look up like an 18 series, it calls it Honduran mahogany. Mm -hmm. And so I just wonder why. Is this is mahogany? This <laughs> is this like, you know, Mar uh, Taylor's getting a lot of their mahogany from Fiji now. And it's actually Honduran mahogany that was planted in Fiji. Yeah. Maybe... This is Fiji mahogany? That's actually Honduran mahogany species-wise? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not mahogany, but they say it's mahogany. So yeah. just putting it out there. Um, if anyone from Martin wants to clear that up, we'd appreciate it. Uh, but all, all in all, this has been a kind of top seller for years. We've done videos comparing the 15 series. Our buddy Patrick, who likes to break guitars on our piano channel, owns one of these. Yeah. Um, and they've, they've long been kind of a favorite for the good price being made in the U.S. and having that wonderful, round, warm tone. And you're yeah. a big fan. Yeah, I really like this guitar. I think it's too, just looking at them both right now, they're both understated in appointments as well, both yeah. not bound. It's like, it's, they're very similar. But um, of the 15, you know, mahogany guitars, there's the SM, there's the... MSM, so you know, the, slide of headstock and the street the beat up one. Yeah, <laughs> they're all pretty great. Um, they're all really nice guitars. I think this is maybe my favorite, just because it is that very simple. You know, the slide of headstock has version has that kind of extended, more old school body style, mm -hmm. and the street master the slope shoulder. Yeah, has the uh, you know all the street master stuff. This is really straightforward. I've always liked it when Pat's played it, and when I've gotten to play his. They break in really nicely like his is. 
But this is an interesting comparison because it's uh, it's got the Taylor aesthetic, you know. It does. You know, one of the things that I like about this going with kind of the understated and vintage aesthetic too is the open gear tuners. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got uh, there's no binding on the guitar. It's just it's and, and you know historically these kind of got Martin through the Great Depression. Uh, the 15 series were you know again just like they are now back then, a budget guitar yeah, that's um, that they could produce and, and be just fantastic at it. This is definitely an updated version. In very similar construction to the fact that we're it's all solid wood, it's made in the U.S., um, there's no binding, which you know Taylor's been doing with all of the American Dreams. It's got the chamfered edges, mm -hmm. which is nice. I actually don't feel a huge difference between them, and I think partly because they're both small body guitars. Yeah. You know, you're just not hitting the edge quite as much. This one does have a pickup with it, you know, which yeah. you made the point of. Um, and the scale length's different. I actually prefer the scale length than the, the nut width on this. So that is a 25.4. It's basically about a 25 and a half inch scale length, yeah. which is why I say it makes it an OM, actually. Um, it's 11, 111 sixteenths nut width. This is a Taylor Grand Concert, so it's following that 24.75 inch scale length and one and three quarter inch nut width. And so the scale length, when you shorten it, it provides a warmer sound and a slinkier feel. Definitely slinkier on that one. This, it, you know, back and forth, it almost makes that one seem less slinky and this one more just very tight, mm -hmm. tension-wise, um, which informs the tone on both of these for sure. But yes, uh, longer scaling tends to be brighter, but also have more volume because there's a little bit more tension on the top. Yeah. Now, that's not apples to apples in this case because it has V-class bracing yeah. versus the classical X bracing from Martin. And so it'll be interesting to hear it. Martin tends to, here's how most people categorize or describe these two builders. Martin tends to have very warm, woody sound, and Taylor ha tends to be bright and articulate. And uh, I think these guitars might be surprising. So you're going to put them through their paces. Oh, yeah. Put your ears on. Check it out. We'll see you on the other side.
All right, so I'm curious what you heard on the comparison as Cooper is playing these two guitars. I want to hear what you heard, and then I'm going to tell you what I hear when I play these two. Yeah, um, so as you heard on the demos, I started off with the pick, playing the same kind of pattern, same chord progression, and then repeated the second time around, dropped the pick, finger picking. Um, on the Triple O 15M, just that first big old strum on the E chord, massive, big, open tone, great sustain. And then um, I think it, partly due to the tension on the strings and all that, it's like when you switch the finger picking and you're used to just digging in, it doesn't really, you know, it's, it's a tougher transition as opposed to this, which, you know, started with the pick. It's kind of like how you talked about before. It's almost got that like tube, you know, compression. Tube you're, compression yeah, yeah, you're running it through a some kind of old school compressor to where it's getting crushed. It gets when spanky and like peaking the mids yeah, and stuff. It's, yeah, it's, you can hear it peaking when you're, uh, you know, strumming, which is a cool effect. But then dropping the pick, it's almost like the dynamics were a little closer together. Right. It was a little easier, more articulate. And the tension on here, I keep my acoustic a whole step down. It almost feels a little closer to that. You know, yeah. it's like... You get a little more play, you can bend a little bit easier, and you know, it's just a little, it's a little, I'm not saying that this guitar is hard to play, but it's a little easier. There was like some little licks that I was doing. It was just easier to catch all those without, you know, all the extreme tension and a little bit more spaced out, you know, but. Yeah, there's always certain chord forms that for me are just on a shorter scale guitar, much easier to land. And that's just because all the frets are a little bit closer together. Yeah. All the harmonies are a little bit close together, so the sound tends to warm up. Um, but yeah, the compressions are on both of these guitars. You know, you were talking about when you lay into it with a pick, it's there. When you're finger picking, it's all evened out. You've got that compression, but you can get that like spankiness when you're like pulling off and stuff. Yeah, which is really nice. Um, I notice even without playing that this is a much lighter guitar. Much lighter. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think it's a bit more resonant, and that's kind of the openness that you hear. So as far as volume, this is the louder guitar of the two. But what's surprising to me, and here's the thing, by just kind of a PSA word of caution, I've noticed a lot of people tend to equate volume with tone when they're not the same thing. Yeah. Um, and we hear that a lot in classical guitars. You give two people two classical guitars, one's louder than the other. Oh, well, that sounds better. It's really just louder. So just, you know, FYI. This is definitely the louder guitar. I was surprised at the tone of this guitar. I really liked it when we first did the review of it, but I was shocked at how not Taylor-like it yeah. kind of is. Did that hit you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I feel you, and I, I, you know, we talked a little bit about the right application for this mm -hmm. guitar. You talked about studio use. Yeah. Um, you know, we use um, WA47 Junior on the demos, so I think that's a great choice for this kind of guitar, you know, condenser mic, you know, hear a lot of the kind of space around. Right, the, the air. You know, but I think in a studio, something like this, where you're not laying into it, you're not trying to win any loudness contest, you're trying to get the best tone. Real close condenser mic on this guitar with a light touch, it's probably exact sweet spot, for me at least, you know, for the tone of this guitar. Mm -hmm. This, you could take outside and sing to your neighbors yeah. from the front lawn and stuff. This will make a nice, sweet, kind of very dynamically nuanced kind of tone, which I, I do like. And sometimes with Taylors, it's like they're loud and they're bright and they're just like a cannon of sorts, you know. You're but right. um, no, this is a nice kind of subtle. It is. It, 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 the looks kind of give you an idea of the tone, yeah. I think, in a lot of ways. But it was surprising to me that in this particular comparison, I think the Taylor has a kind of a richer, darker bass to it. Like the, yeah. the overall sound, the, the trebles are kind of dampened in this guitar more so than in this one. And that's a bit of a surprise, yeah. um, to say the least. It still has that quintessential Martin tone, but it actually sounds brighter to my ear. And I mentioned to Cooper, I said, maybe it's this, I, I thought for a second, oh, maybe it's the strings. The Martin strings versus the Elixir strings, but this is an American Dream, so it's actually got Dario strings on it. So I'm just gonna go with it's the bracing and the design of the two guitars being just that different and absolutely both being stellar. And think about it, American made from these two builders, you can get this one ordered with a pickup or install your own aftermarket pickup. And if you do that, either of these come in, you know, at a, a fantastic price point, well under two thousand so. dollars. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think about American made from either of these two brands and I'm thinking over two thousand typically I mean that's kind of what I say to people, you know, you're looking for something from these brands. If yeah, you want it's gonna American, be two to three. 
two to three yeah. for an entry level, but both are really nice options, and I think they both look really good too. It's like yeah. a lot of times a brand will make their budget entry level guitar and strip away everything that you want to see, you know. But these are pretty nice. Yeah. So fantastic offerings already from Martin, as we've known for years, and the new kid on the block <clears> from Taylor, I think is a compelling addition to this kind of segment. If you want information on either of these guitars, go to our website, it's alamomusic.com. You can check out information on the 8022E, which by the way, are just now hitting stores. It's available for pre-order on our website as we're doing this video right now. And we've got a bunch coming in, so get in line if you really want one, because <laughs> who knows how <laughs> things as they've been who knows how long they'll they'll be in stock and how long it'll take to get more. Um, and this has been a perennial favorite, and they've been, again, hard to come by. Every time we get one, they kind of go, so mm -hmm. I'm glad we were able to make this comparison for you. But you can see information on these. You can chat live with one of our associates, and you can kind of sort through the mix to find the right guitar for you. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. The best guitar in the world is... All mahogany. All hog, or the one that you're making music on. So, uh, yeah, what did we learn? They're both great. They're both great. They're both relatively and I want, affordable. I want both. Yeah. Uh, 10 out of 10 for both guitars. I, I, yeah, they're huge values. They're both fantastic. And you'll be a fan of one or the other probably. And if you like both, just buy both. That's, that's the message for today. So if you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you like, check us out on Patreon, see what we're doing there with more fun. Make sure you check out that in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.